Hi everybody. Let's learn the Python basics today. So let's directly jump into the course. Let's write a quick program to print hello world. Okay. So this is the Python statement to print a string. Okay. Print is a keyword. It is highlighted in blue color and we have to open a parenthesis, close a parenthesis and inside you have to write a string. Okay. So I'm going to write a string something. Okay. Say hello world and it's going to fail. Why? Because strings should be enclosed in quotes. Either double quotes or you can use single quotes. Okay. See that? It has printed hello world. Okay. So I'll be sharing all the links of the websites we are going to visit in the description. So this is a very simple hello world program. Even you could have written like this using single quotes. Stay safe. Okay. So that is also yielding a very similar result. It is printing out the string for us. I hope this will be very clear. Then Python works with indentations. What are indentations? Indentations are just spaces in your program. Even when you are writing a letter or writing or composing an email, we will give some indentations right, to make it more presentable and readable. Okay, so that's what we are trying to do here. Indentations. Okay, so even I just told you, right, where for writing letters or writing some uh, composing emails and all, we, we leave indentations. Or uh, we have one heading and we will have subheadings within that, right. So something like this. We write things to do and we leave a tab or space and we write like uh, go to gym, get groceries, something like that, right? So all these are belonging to things to do, okay? We may have several headings and subheadings like that. So we will know which subheadings belong to the heading. Like that, Python also has headings and subheadings. So this is a if block here asking to compare x is equal to 1 or not. See there is a double equal to, it means it checks for equality. And if there is a single equal to, that means it is assigning. So x is a variable or a container. In other words, we can call it as a box which can hold something. So this x is going to hold the value 1. And here we are checking whether x is holding 1 or not. x is equal to 1. Is x holding 1? We are asking. If it is holding, then this is in the subheading. So this is belonging to the if condition here. If it is holding, then we will print x is 1. Okay. Let's run this. Yes, x is 1 because x is a container, a box which is holding the value 1. Let us try to change this, okay? So let me change it to x is equal to 8 and run the same program. Let's execute it. It's not running. Don't worry, just copy this and go to this repel it.com languages python 3 don't worry i'll put it in the description and let's copy paste it here paste our code here and uh, once you have copied run it press the play button the green button and there you are it doesn't produce any output okay why because x is having 8 and we are checking whether x is 
having 1. x is not having 1, right? So it cannot get into this. That is why there is no output here. So if you want to get the output, you have to add a else statement. An else comes in pair with if only. Okay. There is another thing called else if. We will get into that later. So this if and else are pair. So if this is not satisfied, then automatically it goes to the else clause. So here you can write x is something else because we don't know, right? We don't know whether it is 8 or not. Definitely not equal to 1. So that's why we are going to say x is something else or even better we can say x is not 1. x is not 1. Very good. So, now you understand the conditions here, right? So, this is how we initialize a variable, a container or, or a box, you can say. A box which can hold a value. Here it is holding an integer value. And we are checking the equality. Whether the box contains 1. It doesn't contain, so it has to go through the else part. If it contains 1, then it will take the this section of the code block. So it's printing x is 1. So we are learning a lot of things, right? So this is an exercise. Use the print function to print the line hello world. What does the print statement has? It has goodbye world. Let's say hello world. Okay. First, let's run this. Okay. Okay. And um, okay, that's the solution. Okay, we should not see that. We should be running it. Okay, it says goodbye world, but the expectation is you should print hello world. So let's go back to the script. And modify this part and replace it with hello. Now let's run it again. Yes, great job. We have printed hello world. So that's the end of the first section we have completed. Let's go to the next tutorial. So variables and types. Right? So, we just saw about a variable called as x, my int equal to 7. This is another variable. So, the variable, when you are trying to assign a value, it should be on the left hand side and the value should be on the right hand side. So, what will this program print? It will print 7, right? The value of my int is going to be 7 and we are printing my int. Let's run it. Yes, it is. So, always give some meaningful variable names like age, 5, and you can say age is comma age. Age is the variable here. Okay. So, whatever I am putting, going to put here inside this codes is treated as a string. Python doesn't find out, try to find out the meaning of this. You can put anything, even blah, blah, blah is also fine. So, just for the readability sake, to be printing a descriptive message, we are printing age is age. Age will have the value 5. Let's print this. Yes, this is much better than this print message here, right? We also have meaningful variable names. And you all know age can be of integer type only. And this is a floating point variable. What is a floating point variable? Anything which has a decimal point can be treated as a floating point value. So let's run this. It is printing 7.0 and 7.0 twice. Why is that? 
first time the variable my float has 7.0 and we are printing my float so that will print 7.0 next time see this this is an integer and we are actually casting it we are changing its shape we are type casting it we call it as type casting we cast from one type to another type what is its earlier type it is integer and we are casting it to floating like changing it so when we change 7 to a float it becomes 7.0 that is assigned to this my float and it is printed so these are the two prints okay what is my float i don't understand i need to keep a meaningful variable name right so let me keep as weight because weight will be having some decimal values right like uh, 7.5 kilogram like that and uh, this is going to be a floating point conversion so i'll leave it as it is so i will give a meaningful print statement for the first one okay weight is comma remember the comma you have to give and the weight variable or even you can give i weigh and my weight and then you can add another uh, string here like kilogram see here i weigh 7.5 kilograms probably you can add an s here okay so always have uh, meaningful variable names and give descriptive print messages so that your program is more understandable by the user. And these are strings. Strings we have already looked at. We can in enclose a string using single quotes or double quotes. Both are same. Okay. So this will give the same output. Hello, hello. Okay, so suppose if I want to say uh, like uh, hello and uh, stay safe. Okay, and the requirement is I want the stay safe to be enclosed in double quotes. Okay, and that should be coming as a print even on the screen. Right now these quotes are not coming on the screen. Okay, but for me. I want double quotes also to be present on the screen. So, I can trick Python to use single quotes for enclosing the string and whatever comes inside that is treated as a string, even the double quotes. So, let's run this. See here, hello, stay safe. And sometimes we may need apostrophes like um, hello uh, it it's my life okay so you want the single quotes also to be coming in the screen so to do that we enclose that with the double quotes we enclose the entire string in double quotes so whatever comes inside will be treated as a string and even the single quotes All right, so you can have any number of single quotes inside. Sorry, not the double quotes, single quotes. You may ask, like, suppose if I want to mix both in my output, then what should I do? That I give it as an assignment. Okay, we can discuss in the comment section also. So this is what we were trying to discuss, right? Don't worry about apostrophes because you can use double quotes for it if you want single quotes to be printed. And these are operators, simple operators can be executed on numbers and strings. Numbers I know operators are there, but what about strings? Are there operators for strings also? Yes, in Python we have operators for strings also. So what is happening? One is a variable and uh, this is an integer. 
So one is an integer variable, two is also an integer variable, three is doing an integer addition of one plus two. One plus two is this value one and two is going to be three and three is assigned to this container and three is printed also on the screen. Then we have two string variables, hello and world. Hello is having hello as a string and world is also having world as a string. And here we have another variable called hello world which actually does the addition of two strings together. So what happens? Hello is a variable, right? It is not a string here. If it is a string, it should be inside quotations. If it is not, then it is a variable. So the value of it is going to be substituted here. So hello string plus and there is a blank character here, blank space and world. World has world as a string. So all these things are stitched together, joining. We call it as concatenation in Python. So concatenation is joining of two or more strings together. So these are all stitched together and printed on the screen. See here, hello plus a blank space and world. So if I don't give this here, it will be attached together. Okay, there is no space between these things. So what we understand from this is concatenation can be done using plus operator. Plus operator we have seen so far for adding two numbers but strings also can be joined together like this. And while joining it doesn't leave any space so we have to manually insert a space here. On the other hand, we have seen in the previous examples, I have given comma somewhere here, see. So this is an easy way for printing strings together. See, this is not a string here. It is a floating point value. But these two are strings, okay. These two are strings. If I want to join them, then I have to add like this, do a string concatenation, but I will get an error, I will explain why. Okay, I am getting an error. What is that error? Can't convert float object to string implicitly. You cannot convert string, convert a float to a string implicitly. So which is a float here? This weight is a float. So it expects this to be explicitly converted to a string. Only then we can concatenate using the plus operator. So now it has concatenated. Alright. So these are achieving the same result using two different methods. You can use comma and comma, comma is very easy but some places you will require this plus operator to concatenate. I will tell you where. Okay. So these things we have completed and assignments can be done simultaneously like a comma b is equal to 3 comma 4 and 3 will be assigned to a and 4 will be assigned to b. See here, it's very easy right, you can do simultaneous assignments. And I will show you a trick, okay. So, it's always interesting to learn tricks. So, we can do something like this to swap the value of A and B. A comma B is equal to B comma A. So, what is A and B? A is 3, B is 4. So, the value of B is assigned to A now and the value of A is assigned to B. So swapping in other programming languages, we use a temporary variable uh, and we can do like uh, pass by reference. So many methods are there, but in Python, it's, uh, it's like a shortcut here, okay. 
see here now when I printed a comma b it's saying 4 comma 3 so this is a cool trick right and mixing operators between numbers and strings is not supported we already saw that when I tried to uh, concatenate the weight along with the strings because weight is a floating point value I cannot concatenate without this type casting to string so where are we yes so 1 is an integer variable 2 is an integer variable hello is a string variable we cannot combine all three together okay if you want to really to be combined then do one thing let me give the options like this so i can put a comma in between that will make my work simpler and i have to comment this line otherwise it won't run right so for commenting use the pound sign or the hash see here it has concatenated all so this is a very simple method but you guys try to comment on how you can do type casting and uh, do the same uh, string concatenation okay so do some experiments with that now it is an exercise what is this exercise the target of the exercise is to create a string an integer and a floating point number the string should be named my string and should contain the word hello so wh what is the string my string and should contain the word hello okay i'm going to copy this guy copy and paste it here i remove the dot what is the next section the floating point number should be named my float and should contain the number 10.0 okay where is 10.0 copy and paste it to my float what is the last one and the integer should be named my int and should contain the number 20 okay so i type 20 and what the, what are they doing here they are checking if my string is equal to hello yes right my string is hello so if they check for equality it will be true right if it is true then the code inside the if block will be executed and here they are introducing another way of printing your uh, values so this is your variable and they have a percentage sign here so the value of the variable will be substituted to this percentage s s stands for string okay so this string value is will be submitted here and the next statement is is checking whether they have the same type so they are checking my float is of type floating point value using a function called is instance if it is true they are combining to check another condition so these both conditions to be true this one and this one that's why there is a hand here so this is the second condition my float is equal to 10.0 yes it is 10.0 and it is a floating point so this entire condition is going to be true so this statement will be executed so what is this statement having my float is 10.0 and the value of 10.0 will be substituted here and this is the last if condition it checks for instance is instance my int my int is a variable is of instance integer is a is an is a type of integer right yes it is so it will be true okay if checks for true or false only and we are checking one more condition that my int should also be 20 the value 20 yes in our case this condition is also going to be true and we are going to print the value my int is 20 and 20 will be printed so let's run this yes great job 
so the string value is hello string value is hello and float value is 10.0000 okay we'll we'll fix that guy why it is going 000 and next is integer is 20 yes everything is perfect so if you want the decimal precision to be of two digits lay up like 10.00 or 10.0 in our case then in that case you can give 0.1 here that means after decimal point give one digit that is enough for me okay see here 10.0 but this solution expects 10.0000 that is why it is showing as red so don't worry but we have learned how to do that okay so i am making it back to normal and running it and getting a great job so that's it about variables We'll meet in the next section. Let's move on to the next tutorial. Oh, next tutorial is about lists. Lists are nothing but like uh, arrays, if you know other programming language. But if you don't know, don't worry. It is like uh, houses on the same street. I call it that way. Because in a street, the street name is not going to change only the house numbers will change okay and imagine in computer science the house numbers are starting from 0 so we call it as index so they start from 0 1 and 2 okay so this is a this is how you how you define an empty list an empty list is a square bracket a set of square brackets which have nothing inside that okay if you are trying to append to this list then use the append method you put the list name and put a dot append and what value you want you put it you can put any value here they are putting one two three and they are printing all the list entries so the values inside that house will be printed what is residing in this uh, my list street house number zero it is the value one so that will print one and what is this street my list house number one the value two because that is the second value we are appending so on up to third value so it will print one two three and this is how you print you access a for list you uh, access of uh, you make use of a for statement for accessing the list elements so this is the list this is the street name and uh, python takes care of how many houses are there it fetches only the values like one two and three every time it runs it picks up one value so it runs three times because there were three houses in that street so it will print 1, 2, 3. This is the another way of achieving the same thing. So line number 5, 6, 7 is a much more tedious way. And this is the easiest way to access the list element. Suppose if there are 100 houses, you cannot put 100 print statements, right? But you can do the repetition using a for loop. Okay, this x is an, any arbitrary value which you can give. Any uh, uh, arbitrary variable. Okay, let's run this. So you can see 1, 2, 3 is getting printed because of these print statements. And the next set of 1, 2, 3 is getting printed due to this simple for loop. Okay. So now let's uh, convert this program to have some more meaningful variable names so that we understand it better, right? So this is a street name we want to give. So we let's call it as um, mg road okay it's mg road and i'm appending the first house and let me put the name of the occupant okay i'm putting raj and who is the second one mg underscore road 
for a pen to the second person let's give John and same street third house okay sing is there and we have to modify the print statements as well because we have used mg road here so i'm going to change it and here also and here i'm going to make it as person who is the person living in the first house and I told you right in computer science the index counting starts from 0 so it starts from 0 1 and 2 okay so it will print Raj John and Singh let's try that yes okay so I hope you understood uh, the use of lists even you can access uh, the strings using this indexing method we will see that in a separate example so this this is how you can create a static list here we dynamically added into the list from an empty list we have grown the list to support three elements in it but here we have statically have initialized the list with three elements here one two and three and you know right it starts with index zero one and two and here we are trying to access the tenth index see you are saying a street that has only three houses and if you want to access the tenth house then it will throw an error right that's what happens so it says index error there is no house number like 10 list index out of range so that makes sense right so here is an exercise in this exercise you will need to add numbers and strings to the correct lists using the append list method so we learned about appending right or growing your list so we have to grow our list using the append method you must add the numbers 1 2 and 3 to the numbers list numbers list is empty so we have to add 1 2 and 3 and the words hello and world to the string variable so hello and world should be appended to the string variable and finally you will have to fill in the variable second name second name is none as of now with the in the names list with the second name in the names list so what is the second name in the names list second name is this one eric which is in index one okay so that's what they have reiterating saying that note that the index is zero based so if you want to access the second item in the list its index value will be one so this is one zero and two so first thing is you must add the numbers 1, 2 and 3 to the numbers list. They want us to use the append method. Okay. So, this is an empty list. So, I want it to grow. So, I am using the append method dot append and I add 1. And I am going to do the same for 2 and 3. Right. 2 and 3 and the next task is in the strings variable we have to append hello and world so strings dot append I'm going to append hello then world Alright, so two tasks are done. What is the third task? 
we will have to fill in the variable second name with the second name in the names list names list okay let me give some enter here so that i know i can read it clearly so i want to make the second name as from the second element from the names list so which is the second element 0 1 and 2 so according to we speaking we say the second element is this one right but that index is actually 1 so we should put 1 here that's it they are printing everything and they will evaluate it okay so let's see yes great job so we have appended 1 2 3 in an empty integer list and hello world in a string list and the second name we assigned to eric all three things done so don't think that the lists can have only integers if we are going to have uh, only integer numbers they can have a mix of both since it has been numbered as uh, since it has been named as numbers we are going to insert only numbers Okay, suppose if it is going to be some kind of uh, data where a person's data, so it can have name, age, gender, address, phone number, everything, right? That also can be part of the list. So successfully, we have learned the basics of lists. And we will meet in the next tutorial, okay? Okay, let's go to the next tutorial hold okay we are going to learn about basics of operators the arithmetic operators okay we have addition subtraction multiplication and division so what will be the output of this one so 1 plus 2 is 3 3 into 3 is 9 9 divided by 4 is some decimal value right but it doesn't work that way all the mathematical rules applies here so there are priorities the operator precedence takes place so first thing is multiplication division then only addition and subtraction if you want something to be happening in your way then you have to add brackets or parentheses so in this case let's check the result it is 2.5 so how is 2.5 coming so 6 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 divided by 4 is 6 divided by 4 will be 1.5 and 1.5 plus 1 is 2.5 so first thing is this multiplication happens 2 times 3 is 6 6 by 4 will become 1.5 1 plus 1.5 is 2.5 suppose you if you want the addition to take place first then you have to add brackets like this so brackets take more priority than the normal multiplication or division so the value changes according to that okay so the next thing is there is a special operator called as the modulo operator it is the normal percentage sign but what it gives is the reminder so it's a normal division a dividend divided by a divisor and it doesn't give the quotient it gives the reminder if you want the quotient then we use this one okay so let's try this so it gives the reminder 2 because 3 times 3 is 9 and 11 minus 9 is 2 okay so if you want just division then you have to use 11 by 3 okay you get the quotient which is 3.66666 okay and if you don't want the decimal point then just add one more slash here that will round off the that will actually truncate the decimal fraction 
So you get just 3. And if you want the remainder, use this percentage. Alright. And what is the next operator? Double star. Double star trans stands for exponent. 7 power 2. That means 7 power 2. And this is 2 power 3. So if you want to get square cube, then you can use 7 to the power 2. 2 to the power 3. Okay. What about finding the square root? Shall we try that? Let's try to get the square root of 81. 81 to the power 0.5. Yes, it works. So we can get the square root also, right, using this. And this one, concatenating strings using the addition operator. We have already seen this in our previous example where we added strings together. And this one adds a blank space between them so that they are more readable. Yeah, this is a very tricky uh, operator because this is a, a normal multiplication operator where we multiply a string with an integer number. This actually creates a repeating sequence. So it prints hello, 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 10 times. Lots of hellos. See here. So this is very good for building our data. And using operators with lists, even you can add two lists together using the addition operator. So this is basically operator overloading. So depending on the object we are having, that is a list object, the addition operator actually adds these two lists together. Okay. So odd numbers is 1357 followed by 2468. That will be the new list. Okay. So joining of two lists together. And even you can multiply the lists using this normal multiplication and it will create a repeating sequence. So 1 to 3, 1 to 3, 1 to 3. That will be the new list. So simple, right? And this is the exercise. So what is this exercise? Anyway, I will be discussing all the solutions, but I want you to go through this learnpython.org yourself and practice everything we have learned. So the target of the exercise is to create two lists called xlist and ylist, which contain 10 instances of the variable x and y respectively. You are also required to create a list called big list, which contains the variables x and y, 10 times each. By concatenating the two lists, you have created. So x is an object, y is an object, in python everything is an object, but we are creating a generic object here, right? And what is the first uh, target exercise is to create two lists called xlist and ylist which contain 10 instances of the variables x and y. So we don't know what type of variable is that, but we want to have 10 instances. We already saw that we can, for getting a repeating sequence, we can just multiply it by 10, right? And similarly for y list also. So those things are already filled up. Y is already filled up for us. So we give, sorry, 10. And finally, we are also required to create a list called big list, which contains the variables X and Y. 10 times each by concatenating the two lists you have created. We just learned about concatenating lists. So we have already created a list, right? X list and Y list. So we just need to add them. X. X list. Plus Y list. Because they are already a list, right? And what are they doing here? X list contains 
They are finding the length of the list. Length is a function, very handy function to count the number of elements, to count the number of houses in a street, something like that. So we are counting and it should be 10 and 10 will be substituted here because percentage D is for integers. That value will come here and this is another integer because length is an integer. It will be substituted here and length of the big list should be 20 because we are concatenating two lists together. And finally, they are checking the X list count. So the list append we saw something like that. We have another method called count which counts the number of elements. So this gives 10 and that should be equal to 10. And we are checking one more condition. We are checking the Y list also to be 10. That will also be true. So we will print almost there. Then we come here. In big list, we count X. We count the number of X. There should be 10 instances, right? So that will be 10. And number of Y, that will also be 10. Total is 20, right? So 10 X and 10 Y, we got great. Let's see. Yes, good work. Okay, so with this, we have completed list exercises. Sorry, it is about operators, right? So we'll meet in the next tutorial. Okay. What is the next tutorial? Oh, that's about string formatting. Python uses C style formatting to create new formatted strings. The percentage operator is used to format a set of variables enclosed in a tuple. So tuple is a cousin of list where you have everything is same like list indexing everything is same but you cannot modify the tuple. Let's see that. Okay, so this is about string formatting. We already saw some of the examples and this name string variable has John in it and John will be substituted here. So it will print hello, comma, space, John and an exclamation. All right. Suppose if you have two variables and you want to print two variables, format them in a single string then you have to enclose them in a tuple. So tuple is, you have parentheses here instead of square brackets. Square bracket is called as a list, okay? So name will get substituted on the first one based on the order. And age is the second one, it's an integer. So John is 23 years old, it will be printed. Okay, suppose if I want to add his weight and he is, I add a weight, percentage F, kilograms, okay, and I add his weight, 57.50, let's print it. Yes, 57.50000 kilograms. So how to fix that? To just to two decimal digits, you add a point 0.2. Okay, just a single point, point 0.2. Yes, we have fixed that. And the next is, for printing out the list, you can make use of the percentage s itself percentage s is it's for strings but you can make use for printing the lists also so this is actually a list it is getting substituted here okay so these are the basic argument specifiers we learned about percentage s for strings percentage d for integers percentage f for floating points percentage dot number of digits f for getting the fixed amount of digits to the right of the dot and this is for 
hexadecimal representation we will learn it separately that's for lower case and for upper case and this is an exercise we have so what is this exercise you will need to write a format string which prints out the data using the following syntax hello john doe your current balance is 53 dollars 44 cents so right now what is happening let's get a feel it's not printing anything okay so this is the format string they are asking us to prepare so they are supplying the data the data is a tuple you know tuple uses a normal curved brackets and inside that you can have any number of uh, values any number of any data types mixed also you can have very similar to lists but you cannot modify it once you are done so this tuple is here and this is the format string variable we have to create we have to form the string so what is the expectation here they want to print hello john doe okay I, I am just taking a copy of it okay and I put a comment here so I know what we are working on so first thing is they want to print john doe okay so john is a is a string right john is a string percentage is followed by doe another string and there is a dot here so i'm just carving what string i want okay your current balance is dollar and that is a floating point value so we have to give percentage f and a dot dot a period right which denotes the completion of the sentence so that dot I am putting. Already the 53.44 has a dot. So I may not handle anything. So this should be fine I think. So whatever the data is going to be substituted in this format string. Based, in the, based on this order. First name, last name and the balance. Let's see. So what's the problem? We did correctly, but the thing is the floating point value, we have to adjust to two decimal values. But here, what is they are expecting is, they, they are just handling with a floating, uh, uh, they are just handling with a string itself. Okay, so just to match their requirement, I'm just modifying this to S. So this 53.44 is also treated as a string in this case. So they are saying great work. But actually, we should have done something like this. How? We should put 0.2F. After the decimal point, we need two fixed digits, 0.44, right? So let's run that. So they, it produces the same output. See the last one is what we did now. But they are not accepting it. But you can understand right the difference. So let's meet in the next tutorial.